aristocratic of all our pets. But it would take more than their aloofness to discourage the devoted owners of these snobbish friends of man. in the nursery rhyme is asked where she's been, the reply is to London to see the Queen. And doubtless she was seeing the Queen on business. Cats aren't the tourist type. Cats are snobs. There's no doubt about that. They began their relationship with man a long time ago as gods. And they've been trading on it ever since. Even kittens, playful as they are, have a certain class that you never find in puppies of their age. Sure, they'll condescend to be petted now and again, but behind their purring display of affection, you always sense a cool, calculating mind that's worked out all the angles. By the way, I must tell you this. I really should. My husband falls asleep on the Chesterfield. Oh. Should we tell him? And uh, the cat, it's the funniest thing, will get on the Chesterfield just when he's asleep. And the two of them are like bouncing up and down. As he... Come on, kids, man. Here's Froggy. I think he could be great in opera. He's got a beautiful voice. He was a complete stray, and I found him sort of dancing on the sidewalk. And we took one look at each other and literally fell into each other's arms. And oh. <laughs> We've got four. <laughs> she's really not a cat, you know. She's like a baby in the house. Oh, he's very, <laughs> very friendly. He's very affectionate, very loving. <laughs> He's got the personality of a hitman. <laughs> It's not just today that cats have the ear of their owners. They've always been quick to assert themselves, quick to train their keepers just how to look after them. In ancient Egypt, the three most important religious creatures were the cat, the vulture, and the crocodile. So, how come today we don't keep vultures and crocodiles around the house? Well, probably because only the cat had, as they say in show business, the moxie to parlay himself into a 6,000-year institution. Yes, it's the ancient Egyptians we have to thank for putting the cat on a pedestal that he's never left since. Over the centuries, the domesticated cat spread from Egypt to Europe. At first, it was primarily valued as a rat killer, so much so, in fact, that when the Russian Tsar Peter died, he was depicted by one artist as a virtuous cat, surrounded by corrupt rat courtiers. Cats became guardians of the harvest. And when man ventured out to sea, the cat went with him to keep his ships free from vermin. It was on the Mayflower that domestic cats first came to North America. As fast as man spread, cats spread with him. In a sense, they had come home. For not since Egypt had cats been worshipped like they are here. In Van Nuys, California, Martine Colette and Gordon Meredith okay. keep cats of all shapes and sizes. Go on, get back. Bye, bye. Go on, get back. There. Oh. 
These are leopard cats, wild creatures from the jungles of South America. Their neighbor is a domestic Persian and recent mother of four. Come on, baby. That's a girl. That's a little girl. Here we have a domestic cat. Gordon, for the past five years, has been trying to breed a domestic cat to a leopard cat so that we would have the colorations of the leopard cat, but this position, which is sweet on a domestic cat. Leah. Although there is great animosity, as a general rule, between leopard cats and people, there is not any between a domestic cat and a leopard cat, and, or even dogs and uh, leopard cats. The actual meeting, the actual getting to know each other, is, it's uh, very, very simple. Uh, shortly thereafter, at their uh, discretion, they will breed. And uh, I have never seen hostility between uh, a leopard cat and uh, the female domestic cats, be it a female or the male of the leopard cats. Skippy is the result of a leopard cat father and a white domestic cat mother. He will be bred back to a purebred leopard cat, which will make the kittens three-quarter leopard cat. He has an unusual shape. He's really not domestic looking. He is exotic looking. You recognized uh, just a few years ago as Bengal cats. This is the most remarkable of coloration. This is the closest we have come in with the fur coloration of a leopard cat still having a good disposition of a domestic house cat. There. Yeah. They are sisters. Shows the difference in the... In the colors that you can get from the same. It seems that while the leopard can't change its spots, the leopard cat can, and change his personality as well. Today, the personality of the cat has been immortalized on film by such cartoon favorites as Sylvester and Tom of Tom and Jerry. But this is the feline that started them all on their animated adventures back in the 1920s. Felix the Cat. In his time, Felix the Cat was a worldwide favorite, though there were those with more refined tastes who were not amused. It has to be admitted that not everyone likes cats. They terrified Napoleon, who broke into a sweat whenever he met one. Another emperor, Julius Caesar felt the same way, but then he was notoriously superstitious. Britain's Queen Victoria, however, adored cats. After the Queen's death, her favorite cat, White Heather, was personally cared for by her son, the King, and lived to a ripe old age. Abe Lincoln liked cats, too. He was rarely without one. And the cat has a place in the future as well as in the past. At least, that's the opinion of author Michael Fox. Some people think that cats are very distant and aloof and they're not social. And you raise them with those expectations and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You'll have a cat who's aloof, is afraid of people and isn't social. I raise this cat with lots of attention and affection. And he turns out not like a human being but like a cat. Cats are basically pretty social. I think the cat is one of the pets of the future. They don't have to be exercised outside very much, and they use a kitty litter tray. They don't have the activity requirements of a dog. For many people, cats are animals that sleep all day and you put out at night. But there are others who take their pets much more seriously than that. Toronto breeder Maureen Nicholson. Two minutes to go into a ring. The first thing we do is 
You make sure that the eyes are clean. Take your rough, you start using a steel comb like that, and you comb all the rough up to frame the face of a cat. Cat shows are where cat fanciers gather to see the best of all the many breeds, like this Persian black smoke. At these events, cats are divided into two divisions, long-haired and short-haired. But the most coveted prize is best in the show, winning against all comers. One of the judges today is William Ramsden, a lifelong expert on cats. You're looking for a good, short, stocky body, a real flat face with the forehead, the nose, and the chin, a straight line, a real dip in the nose, teeth of meat, good spread between the ears and little short ears that don't come above the top of the head, a tail that's as long as the body is long, uh, short on its legs, big wide chest, uh, hips and, and shoulders the same width with a round middle, uh, and it's all compared against a hundred point standard. And on top of it all is uh, the judge sort of knowing what a cat is supposed to look like, having seen so many of them. This blue cream Persian is called Scandal, but today she is not talking, not even to her neighbor, another Persian called Mimi, who shares this Arabian Nights enclosure. Even household pets like this one have their own class at these shows. But it's champions such as this gray Persian that steal the limelight, or fashionable curly-haired Rex cat, like playful mother and daughter here. And there are always new breeds coming along. The crinkle-eared Scottish fold cat is only one. But every kind of cat has its dedicated following, for the cat can be an endearing companion once its friendship has been won. I love them. These are my my children, my pets, then they are show cats. That's why I'm in breeding, for that one reason. I breed because I love my cats and I am proud to own a cat like this and I will always work to better this cat or to any of the litters that I have from this breeding is what I'm working towards. Felix the cat, who came in from the cold, is still spying around 1920s Russia for a solution to his master's obscure crossword puzzle. Felix was king of the animated movies through the silent and early sound era. Ironically, it was a mouse, a mouse called Mickey, who finally displaced him from his throne. Like Felix, trouble was what cats found when they first came to Europe. Trouble in the shape of plague, spread by rats, which the cats helped destroy. Indeed, it has been argued that it was cats that saved European culture from destruction. Over the years, the cat has lost none of his hunting instincts, but despite his vigilance, the rat did not disappear. In various eras, professional rat catchers have seemed to take over from the cat, but they never replaced their four-legged rivals. Witchcraft, hellfire, and damnation. Strange that after his service to mankind, the cat should be associated with superstition and evil. Be man's 
his best friend, but here at the famous pump room of Chicago's Ambassador Hotel, it's a cat who's star today. This glittering social event marks the publication of a book. It's a book about a cat, a famous cat called Morris. Author Mary Daniels is center of attraction for the moment, but all that will end when the subject of her biography arrives. Mm. They love me. It's the price one has to pay if one's talented, attractive, and charming. Mm. That world-weary voice of Morris has become known to millions of television viewers. No, no, behind the ear. Next, she'll be saying she could just die. Every big star has his Sven Galley. And with Morris, it's a man called Bob Martwick who found him and trained him. Well, I supply animals for the commercial studios in Chicago, and about eight years ago, I had a request for an orange cat. Went to the local Humane Society, and he was there among many other cats. And, uh, he's very short-nosed as cats go. It makes him quite unique. He's got a broad head and very short, wide-set ears, more like a bobcat than the ordinary house cat. His confirmation, though, is excellent. Uh, judges we've met have told us that uh, he's one of the finest cats they've ever seen. Well, he's very calm. He can tolerate a great deal. He works in situations that I could never work another cat in. Extremes of noise and lights and so forth. We don't know why he's that way, he's just different, but that's what makes him Morris. The second time I met him was right here in the pump room when he was in booth one. He was hosting a, a uh, getaway weekend for the winner of his lookalike contest. And, uh -huh. <laughs> and then I knew I was in because um, he liked me then. He was being very friendly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So uh, I, I put that in my book that when I first told him I wanted to do a book on him, that I wanted to do his biography, he said, Hmm, I thought I was getting Norman Mailer. <laughs> yeah. He's a very sophisticated cat. Those He's are very is. special whiskers. Of course, finicky is just yes. a middle-class word yes. for discriminating. About him. He is every cat. And, I, you know, I just knew that this was the way my cat muttered about me behind my back. Uh, the things that he, he, he is, says to his yes. owner in the these commercial. These little footnotes these, that he comes little, out These with. little yeah. asides, yes, yes. That, that is every cat. Ah. <sighs> what I wouldn't give for a little intelligent conversation. Well, he lives like an ordinary cat. He lives here with us, and uh, we leave him uh, live like a cat. We tried being a little fancy with him, getting him special beds and stuff, but he still likes to sleep on the chair or on the desk or whatever's convenient. True to his homespun American success story, Morris has a friend next door. And from time to time, he sneaks off to see her, just like in the Andy Hardy movies. Mm. Mart, how many times do I have to tell you if there's any picking up to do around here, I'll do it. Morris lives a comfortable life on Bob Martwick's small, quiet estate near Chicago. It's from here that he goes out to make his many television and film appearances. Like most big stars, he also helps out his favorite charities, including the American Humane Society. Morris is little trouble around the house. Easy to feed, easy to entertain, but sometimes hard to listen to. If you know how, humans are remarkably easy to train and pathetically easy to please. Well, he looks on me as somebody who brings the chow at that time. Uh, most cats are too independent to be, I think, to look on anybody as a fatherly or motherly person. I know we hear an awful lot of stories when we're out. Everybody tells a story about their cat like they do their children naturally. And I think that uh, a lot of them it's their belief, but I don't believe it's a cat's belief. We've traveled about 350,000 miles in the past two years. 
I know he enjoys the travel because uh, after we've been home for a week or two weeks or so, he gets very bored. He sees a suitcase come out. Right away, you can see the excitement show up. No, wait, not yet. Not till she gives the word. You would think cats were designed to be celebrities. They're exotic in ways that would have made the old-time movie star green with envy. <sighs> I wonder if the president ever gets tired of shaking hands. Their forebearers were gods. They have a natural style and elegance. They are the aristocrats of pets. But we superstars learn to put up with all this attention. Despite their natural reserve, cats are friendly, but they choose their friends. You see, you have to know a cat to win his confidence, to win his affection, and even then, there's still mystery. No one can ever say finally they know their cat, for cats are ultimately inscrutable like the Sphinx. They may seem half human, but they remain all cat. These age-old friends of men. Well, I wouldn't exactly say friends. It's more like acquaintances. <laughs>